everyone, welcome to Principal Creative Street. So today we've got Jesse Francis with us. So yeah, I'm Jesse Francis. I am an artist uh, and instrumentalist, musician. The structure of this interview is going to go from basic questions, then a would you rather game, deeper questions, finish up with a tip. Yeah, cool. Right, so if you couldn't call yourself Jesse Francis and you had to pick a stage name, what would it be? Sovereign Sound. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. It used to be my old name, like my stage name, and then I changed it. So what's your favourite personal song? So your own song? Make a good album. Yeah? Yeah. It's between that and Venice. That and Venice. Yeah. Yeah. No, Venice is like, obviously it's a vibe, but I think like from the reaction I've had with crowds, making good dabs like... Is it? Optimal. Yeah, I'd have thought so, to be fair. I've seen, obviously on your YouTube channel, the other one, which is the Jesse TV. Mm. And I've seen you do some trick questions and stuff in the street. Yeah, bro. So when are you going to do the next episode? Probably when I start. So In September, yeah. And where, where's that going to be, do you know? Have to see. If you could get a feature of any celebrity, who would it be? That's a hard question. So I want to say Drake, but then <laughs> I don't know. Like he's cold. Yeah. But in terms of like the way I'd go, I don't know. I don't know. Share something new about yourself that not many people know. Okay. Um. So I um, have played the viola at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Not a lot of people know that. Good. All right, sorry everyone, we had to move because it started lashing it down. <laughs> At this point now, we're going to do a would you rather game. So I'll give you two options and you have to choose one, right? That's weird. Live in the UK or America? Ah, um, America. Would you rather know when or how you die? When? When? Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. Tupac. Same. Would you rather never wear pants anymore or shorts? Shorts. Would you rather have 30,000 followers with 40% supporting you or 20,000 followers with 65% support? 20,000. 20, yeah. 20, yeah. Definitely. Right, so now we're going to do the deeper questions, alright? Alright, man. Alright, so who inspires you nowadays? I suppose it's the people around me, like a lot of my friends. How did you learn the viola? And when did you become fluent? I okay, I actually started playing the violin when I was two years old. I started playing that. I played that till about two years ago, and I switched to the viola. Um, so it's quite like similar. I became like like fluent on the viola within like the first like few weeks of it. Talk me through your steps to making a song. I'd first kind of go through the mood of the song, so like how I'm feeling. Then I'll kind of like create the beat. So I'll start with like the production side. So once I've got the kind of like outline and structure of the beat, then I'll make the lyrics. Sometimes I usually do the melody first of what I'm gonna sing or rap, and then um, then kind of come up with lyrics around that. How important are music videos to you? Music videos are very, very important. Like, you can have a decent music video and people will like engage with you more. If you've not got music videos out, like, I feel that kind of limit yourself. Whenever I've dropped a music video, the amount of like, reactions are bigger. People just get hyped because it's visual. It's visual, yeah, exactly. yeah. What's been the key to growing your Instagram page? Well, I used to actually do like, just posts of myself and like pictures of myself. Yeah. Um, so I, my Instagram grew from that and like other like brands and bigger like, accounts like kind of shout me out. With my music, I suppose just like, yeah, when I've dropped a video or like a freestyle and did something, that's how people just like see my stuff. So yeah, that's fair play. What's been the major turning point for you? I realised that I needed to, you know, use what I know. Yeah. And I've just started, you know, like, not the music that's out at the moment, but like the music that I've got coming out. Um, yeah, it's a lot better. It's like more meaningful and it's like I put music, like my musicality into it. So yeah, like that. that's my turning point. As a, as a starting artist still, how do you get your income? Do you work on the side and bring it in or do you do shows and stuff? Or? Well, before it was more of a thing where I would do as much as I could without having to pay for it. So like, for example, for artwork, for my music, I'll do that myself. 
So I think it's just about using kind of like more what you've got. How did you afford to do things like music videos? And it was more like negotiation. So like, for example, mm -hmm. like the music video I did, one of them, um, I produced for the people that did the video. Oh, okay. Um, so I, that was kind of like, I did their production. They did your favorite as well. Video, so. Fair enough. So what are your long-term plans? Like, are you thinking of eventually signing or do you think independence is your way forward? I don't really want to sign because I feel that it's just like, I don't know what a label would be able to offer that I can't kind of do myself. I think in the future, I want to be able to, you know, help other people and help other artists that are like trying to upcome and like they can kind of look for something to encourage them to see where they can get to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think I want people to realise that, you know, they should not kind of like follow other people and kind of follow other, what people are doing. They should kind of like try to create their own pathway and kind of be unique in what they're doing. In the future, I see myself kind of like being an artist that's like completely different from most. Like, yeah, I yeah. want to just be another rapper, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to do more like off my obviously classical side and put that into my music, which I've been doing more recently. Ah, uh, yeah, man. What can we expect from you within the next year? Ooh, that's a hard question. Well, you can expect obviously more music, maybe some more visuals. Good. Maybe a project, maybe a project. So maybe yeah. like a little EP. Can we get a rough idea of when? Ooh, probably late this year or start next year. Right, so now it's the final part of the interview. I'm going to ask you to give a tip on a certain topic and then you just do your best you to get. What advice would you give to someone who has been like practicing music for a long time mm. and they have put the work into it and they are passionate for it, mm. but they haven't found the sound? There's nothing that's ever original in my eyes because you're always taking influence from something that you've seen or heard before. Yeah. I think it's the right people that need to see, that you need to have the right people to see what you're doing uh, for it to kind of take off. There's so many artists that I know that are like, you know, they've got a good sound, or well, they say they're finding their sound, um, but people haven't seen it. And it's just yeah. about the having it. Once you have the exposure and once you get put on the platform, then... So experiment it's... until you happy with something and then put it in front of the right people. Yeah, I think you have to find your niche as well. Cause, the niche, yeah. Yeah, because if you, right, for example, if I'm a country artist yeah. doing country music and I'm trying to promote my country music to a load of people that like trap and listen to like Travis Scott, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not happening. No. So you need to kind of like obviously find the right kind of people you're trying to promote your music to and kind of get it to the, those people. That's yeah. the most important thing. I respect that. Thank you for that, mate.